intelligent growth. Hold. Sorry, yeah. yeah, no problem. Okay, let me just go back here. Okay, guys, apologies. Um, we we're on mute there. So, just starting again. Welcome to today's mobile guru program. Um, my name is Henry Ma, and I'm an app promo specialist here at Google. Um, today, we're going to look at Google's new app growth tools and innovations. A um, bit of background on myself, I'm part of a team of 80 globally. Um, there's two of us who sit and manage the Australia and New Zealand market. Um, and we're a dedicated team specifically for apps designed to help both developers and agencies in all facets of your app strategy, um, from tracking to goal setting to implementation and app promotion. And today we'll touch on the majority of these points. Um, just focusing on the agenda for today, I've broken it up into two sections. So the first half hour, we'll look at smarter marketing with Firebase Analytics. And in the second half, we'll look at the next generation of app growth. Um, today, we want to discuss the next evolution of app marketing, which we at Google describe as intelligent growth. Um, we want to provide you with the tools that help you understand how users behave in your apps, and then allow you to turn these, these insights into marketing actions. And fortunately, intelligent growth is a challenge that Google can help with. And it can do that with the new Firebase platform. Now, Firebase is the new Google Analytics for apps and will be Google's mobile developer platform of the future. Um, it's an app-first, beautiful UI designed for apps, which we'll touch on later in today's presentation. Um, you've got unlimited analytics solutions that help developers to understand in-app behavior and marketers and agencies like yourselves to understand the key metrics like installs, lifetime value, and cross-network attribution. Um, and because it combines these behavioral an analytics with conversion analytics in AdWords and other pieces, one moment, programmers and marketers have a single source of truth to be able to make optimization decisions um, for their app on the fly. So Firebase has been built with three key principles in mind. Um, it's a single SDK, which is a software development kit. Um, it's cross-platform, as I sort of saw in the slide previously, with being cross Android and iOS. Um, and it's also divided into these three sections, being develop, grow, and earn. Um, and it has these 15 products, which all work under one umbrella, and which all work better together. Um, today, we're going to focus on, or primarily, on the tool that ties all these services together, and that's right at the core, and that's Firebase Analytics. Um, today, there's an, you know, a few things we want to, you should know about Firebase Analytics, and we'll start with the big picture. Now, Firebase Analytics is free and unlimited. Um, no matter how many millions of users your app might have, there's no paid tier to worry about. No data sampling like you've seen in Google Analytics. Um, nothing like that to be concerned with. Um, it also follows an event-driven model. So instead of looking at your app, again, like Google Analytics, in terms of sessions and page views, um, Firebase Analytics looks at your app in terms of events that happen within your app. And Firebase Analytics is seamlessly integrated with other Firebase features, as we saw in that slide earlier. While you don't have to use the other features of Firebase, Firebase gets more and more powerful the more of it you use. Um, and the integration with Analytics is a primary reason for this. So um, the best way to understand Firebase is to have a look under the hood. Um, and today I want to show you what the front dashboard looks like and why Firebase is an event-centric model. Um, so here we've got a screenshot, or one of the screenshots I'll share from the main dashboard. Um, you'll get a monthly, weekly, and daily report of active users, um, as well as on the right-hand side, you've got revenue reports, where you can see average revenue per user, which is ARPU. Um, so app developers have a lot of jargon like this, which is average revenue per user, and you've also got per paying user, which is ARPU per. Um, and you can use these to calculate the LTV of your clients. 
Um, you'll also get retention cohort reports, which can let you see for any given week how many users stick around for the following week, the week after that, and so on. Um, cohort analysis, depending on the app you're working on, um, with retention may or no, may not be important. But just to give you a little understanding here, so if we look at the week of May 22nd to May 28th, um, week zero or day zero, obviously retention is 100%. If we go into week one, we see that retention or the skew period is a darker blue than the previous weeks in week one, and therefore we know that retention here is higher than the average. Um, so it's interesting, you know, look at the app there and say, what things have we done differently? Um, you know, and how can we look at taking this forward? Why are these users we've acquired um, in this particular week are sticking around for longer? Um, you know, retention is going to be key in verticals like travel, gaming, education, and real estate. Um, you'll also receive user engagement reports, which allow you to track how long users are spending time in your app. Um, and if your app has in-app purchases, as you can see on the right, you'll get in-app purchase reports. So you can see where users are spending the most of your money. Um, so you can see with the in-app purchase reports, we've got the different product, we've got the quantity of those in-app purchases, and we've also got the revenue which is generated for them. And then the user engagement side on the, on the left, we've got you know average session duration, number of sessions per user. Um, so all these things are very relevant to you in analyzing your app and understanding your audience. Um, you can also see version usage over time. Um, you can find out how many people aren't upgrading to the newest version of your app as fast as you'd like. Um, or if there are older versions of your app out there that you still need to support, for example. Um, there are reports on device models and OS versions, so you can decide, for instance, if you need to spend more time on polishing your tablet experience or need help deciding what operating systems you need to support. Um, you can also use these device reports to filter your user base and understand um, you know, if higher devices correlate with more valuable users, for example. Um, so here we've got, you know, it looks similar to Google Analytics, um, but this demographic and interest information that you see here is actually data that Google has layered on top of your app's data. Um, so you can see what countries your users are coming from, as well as both age and gender breakdown of your customers. Um, so you have a better idea of who your target market is. You'll also be presented with a list of interests from these users, so you can better tailor your app's content um, or marketing campaigns. Now, all of this is available automatically to you as soon as you start integrating the Firebase SDK, but you probably want to get more detailed information about what's going on in your app. And for that, we'll have to start logging events. So as I touched on um, earlier, Firebase Analytics is an event-centric model. So unlike Google Analytics, um, we're looking at sessions and page views, Firebase Analytics is all about sending events from your app. So what is an event? An event is comparable to goals in Google Analytics. Um, and these are important because this is what, op this is what you optimize campaigns towards. Um, and Firebase Analytics lets you define up to 500 custom events with any set of parameters you'd like. Um, so here we've got an example of some events which Google suggested for our marketers and developers. Um, you, can define the event, you can define the events that matter most to your business. And by passing these back to Google as conversions, we can then use our machine learning algorithms to find more of these events or maximize the value of these events. Ooh, this slide's played up. Apologies. I might just skip this team. Um, you can also get deta detailed information about these particular events. Um, so just to give you a rundown, guys, this slide here was listing off the events. And then the second slide here is we're looking at a detailed information about these, a particular event. Um, and in this particular event, you'll see the event count, you'll see the users and the value graphs for all your events. So the count shows you how many times that event was fired. The users show me how, shows you how many users took that action during that particular time period. Um, and value shows you if there is a value associated with that event, um, like a purchase. Um, so you can see its usage over time, as well as get access to other information about the event. Um, and the other information is things like location and population of the users who have triggered these events, as well as the number of times per session that this event has been triggered. Um, for all those event reports, you can also filter them by any of the user properties we track. For instance, to see if more males than females are completing the tutorial in your app or sharing the app with their friends 
or viewing their in-game achievements. Firebase can also provide you with some dedicated reports for these events. For example, um, this is for a gaming client of ours, but this is a report for a level up. Um, a suggested event that happens when a user levels up in a game. Um, so you can see that it includes a histogram of the level parameter, um, which indicates a new level um, each time that individual is leveled up. Um, so now let's sort of move from events to conversion events. Um, so obviously some events that happen in your app are more important than others. And these are generally the key business drivers for your app and the ones that you as marketers care most about. Now obviously every business is unique, so it's up to you to determine what to conversion events make the most sense for your app. For example, when a user makes a purchase or shares the app with friends or completes a registration form. Um, within the events tab here, you can mark as an event, an event as a conversion by toggling the switch. So as we see, um, spend virtual currency and unlock achievement, the bottom two toggles have been switched. Um, and when you do this, um, you start to see in this screenshot here the attribution data come through from these conversions. Um, this means you can understand which traffic sources are driving most of the conversions, um, whether it's an ad campaign, whether it's a push notification, or whether it's just organic search results. Um, within, within these attribution results, you can also filter by source, medium, and campaign. Um, and these are essentially ways of hierarchically, hierarchically representing marketing campaigns. So, you can look at all your various campaigns and find out not only if a particular campaign is bringing you users, but if it is bringing you high quality users um, that are performing actions in your app that you care most about or that you associate the most value with. Um, Firebase Analytics also gives you a more detailed breakdown of these events by source. Um, medium and campaign parameters. So in this example, you can actually see a breakdown of all the first open events by the various ad networks. Um, nice to see Google's on top here. Um, this report also includes total revenue and lifetime value numbers for the average customer. So you can work out which networks are giving you the most valuable users. Um, and you know where to really concentrate your marketing spend. Um, Firebase Analytics generally follows a last click model meaning that the ad network that the user last clicked on gets credit for bringing you that customer. Um, now, sort of, let's shift this events discussion or conversion discussion into the concept of audiences. Um, this is an important one as audiences are used as groups that you can target through the Firebase platform and across the platform. Um, for instance, you can create an audience of people who have verified billing details on your app, um, sort of as broad as that. Or um, in this example we see here, women who are from Canada between the ages of 18 and 34 who have made an in-app purchase and whose favourite artist is the Italian painter Raphael. So it really can be as broad or as narrow as you like. Um, as you create these audiences, Firebase Analytics subscribes users to them over the time as they use your app. Um, you can also use these audiences in conjunction with other features of the Firebase platform. Um, and one of these is Remote Config, which um, allows you to deliver a specific message of the day to members of a specific audience. Um, in addition to this, you can also target specific audiences using Firebase notifications. Um, for example, suppose you have an audience of purchasers who consist of users who have purchased items in your app. Um, you could use notifications to notify just these people, so just the purchasers, that you have a new item available, similar to what they purchased before in your app store, or even send them a discount code. Um, another way to leverage off audiences is you know, use these audiences for remarketing campaigns in AdWords. Um, these are you know, ad campaigns designed to bring current or lapsed users back into your app. Um, if, for instance, you have new products available to purchase in your app, you could create an AdWords campaign that's targeted just towards users who have purchased a similar product um, from your app store and then use that audience. So similar, you know, you can sort of ship them a, you know, to paid advertising through AdWords or you can even do a Firebase notification um, that way as well. Um, and then, you know, sort of touched on the AdWords piece here, but Firebase you know, has the ability to link with other Google products. Um, AdMob, which is uh, Grow or the monetization network, 
we've got AdWords, BigQuery, and also Google Play. Um, BigQuery is Google's data warehouse in the cloud, um, and that lets you run very fast data analysis over large sets of data. Um, and finally, let's address the question that we get from many agencies and developers um, that we should really deal with, and that's, should I be using Firebase Analytics or should I be using Google Analytics? Um, and the answer is, it, it does depend. Um, there are certainly advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, Firebase Analytics is free and unlimited. Um, it also follows a model that makes much more sense for native app developers, um, and it's integrated with other Firebase features. Um, you can also export your data to BigQuery for more sophisticated analysis, um, and you can't do that with Google Analytics without paying for their subscription service. Um, and you know, right now, this, the library only supports. Right now, though, the library only supports native mobile clients. Um, whereas Google Analytics, on the other hand, supports both mobile and web properties. Um, but as a result of this, it does tend to focus on page views and sessions, and that's why the event-centric model of Firebase is probably um, we are more recommended for apps. Um, it also supports, um, Google Analytics in this case, also supports more sophisticated out-of-the-box reporting. Okay. Now, the second half of today's presentation, um, we'd like to talk to you about some of the exciting things that we've built to help you grow a valuable user base for your app, um, and then looking at how we can maximize the lifetime value of these particular users. So Google products are woven into people's lives at scale. That's incomparable. Um, you know, you've all heard by now that we have seven products that each reach over a billion users. Um, we know that you know, users are coming to Google when they're looking for that new app to download. They're searching where to have lunch. They're browsing videos on YouTube. You know, we think of these engagements with Google's products as moments that matter to our users, and we have the opportunity to show them information that's contextually relevant to their goals at these moments. And you've probably been aware of this term which we've coined, which is micro moments. Um, and across these properties, we've recently made massive strides in app discovery, um, lighting up this inventory with two big launches this year to help marketers take advantage of these micro moments at Google scale. Um, and those two are search ads in Google Play for Android um, and also universal app campaigns. So let's start with search ads in play. How do people discover new apps? Well, they're often searching. Um, in a recent Tune study, and Tune is a third-party ad tracking provider, um, app store searches accounted for 67% of app downloads. And our own data at google.com shows a huge increase in app-seeking queries. Um, we launched search ads in play because there's no better place to be than right in front of a user as they're looking for an app. It was a perfect addition to search ads on Google.com, meeting user intent precisely where it lives. Customers have found great success through search. Um, Grubhub, which is the US sort of equivalent of Deliveroo and Fedora, helped tens of thousands of people order food as a result of a 16 times growth in their download volume. Um, I've got a video from the CEO which I can share with the group after. Um, I mean, that's a lot of happy customers enjoying burritos from the comfort of their own home. OK, Google, help me grow my app. Search ads in play have been an incredible success story for marketers. But let's talk about another launch that's helped marketers to turbocharge app growth across all of Google's app promotion inventory, and that's universal app campaigns. Now, universal app campaigns, um, Android currently, are a one-stop shop for marketers to tap all the app promotion inventory and formats available at Google with one campaign and minimal investment in setup. With this single campaign type, you can run ads on the Play Store, so we're going from left to right here, um, google.com, um, the AdMob network, which is while um, users in ads while people are in other apps, um, the mobile web, so Sydney Morning Herald and whatnot, um, and on YouTube um, as pre-roll ads. Now, universal app campaigns today use our machine learning algorithms to maximize the number of downloads that you can get for your budget at your target cost per install, or cost per acquisition. And all sorts of apps, from the catch of the day here in Australia to eBay, are finding success with UAC smart automation. Now, instead of you maneuvering through millions of different combinations of 
settings and variables, turning all the knobs and dials, we built simplicity and power straight into the model. Um, universal app campaigns also pull in creative assets from the Google Play Store, automatically generating beautiful and effective ads for each network. Um, you can optionally add a video, which will enable you to run on YouTube and video in inventory also on the AdMob network. So let's talk about how Universal App Campaigns are so simple. Um, you, know, you just need to enter a few bits of information to get started. First, provide some creative text to tell potential users more about your app. So in the example here, it's a running app um, on the Play Store. Um, this, is in the this is in the AdWords interface. We're typing in track distance and speed, reach your running goals for all your running levels, maximize performance. There's a strong call to actions there. Then in addition to that, you pick your geolocation pick the language of your users, and then tell us how much you're willing to pay per install and the maximum amount you want to spend per day, and you're done. Um, here's an example um, from HBO and they, you know, about the simplicity of UAC. Um, they're seeing both value and efficiency in the setup and the execution. I mean, think about everything you guys can do with an extra hour and 45 minutes. So simplicity isn't the only thing that sets universal app campaigns apart. Um, we also use the power of Google's machine learning smarts to work for you. Universal app campaigns automate targeting, bidding, and creative generation to find you more installs for your dollar. A model evaluates a huge number of signals and constantly learns and adjusts, meaning that every ad we show to users is based on the freshest and most relevant data. Um, and the beautiful, or the best thing, really, is that we do all the hard work in the background um, and just you know, investing your money where it goes the furthest. Okay, Google, help me grow my app business. Um, so that's you know, universal app campaigns today. The best way to drive the highest volume of installs for your app. Um, and app installs are great, but that's really a first step. Um, and I think driving installs is pointless if people never use your app once it's on their phone. So. Um, our team is really thinking about ways we can take universal app campaigns to the next level to help you, to help you actually grow your business. Um, so we're not looking for a volume of installs, we're looking for valuable customers. Um, and look, you know, Google's vision um, is really a simple way to find high quality users for your app across the largest pool of inventory. Um, with this success, driven by you know, context and automation and machine learning, um, you know, I'm also excited to today dive into our next vision for universal, for the ge next generation of universal app campaigns. Um, you know, we want to shift that from a volume to a value. Um, you know, to find high quality users for your app across the largest possible pool of premium inventory out there. So let's start with the second half of that statement. Um, we're no longer just an Android shop. We've recently, or you know, the beta's on at the moment um, for universal app campaigns for iOS. Um, we're expanding it across iOS, and soon you'll be able to run that universal app campaigns to acquire users across Google's iOS app inventory. Um, so the only one we don't have here is um, the addition of ads in Google Play. Um, now let's take the first half of the vision statement, which I showed earlier. You know, that's around finding high-quality users. Um, so this slide here is very interesting in terms of 17% of users drive 85% of revenue. Um, so finding these users has been historically very hard and very manual. Um, you, know, you used to have to run your campaign to acquire your users. You had to measure the lifetime value of these users, figure out what targeting drove those users, bid up bid down on what works and what doesn't, um, and acquire more users, um, and then repeat. Um, you know, what if there was a way to find this 17% from the get-go? No tweaking and twiddling in, twiddling in AdWords. Um, you know, the next version of Universal App Campaigns you know, is what we, this is what we taught our machines to do and do all this work for you. Um, the next generation of Universal App Campaigns will incorporate even more of Google's machine learning algorithms to find prospective users likely to be high value customers for your app. In addition to maximizing the number of downloads, 
we're going to also be able to enable you to optimize for specific events. So similar to the events I touched on in Firebase, um, you know, these are more, you know, which are sort of triggers which highlight more value for your business um, or even the value of these particular events. Um, because there are literally billions of different combinations of signals and insights around user intent and context, we're going to use the machine learning here to help you achieve your marketing goals. Um, so, you know, whether your goal is volume of installs or volume of important events or the value of these particular events, Universal App Campaigns can automatically bid and optimize for your desired goal. Um, so an example here from our Europe team, which is Peak Games. Um, a casual gamer tested this technology early on in display with a product called Conversion Optimizer. Um, after realizing that users who reached the end of level five in Toy Blast were more, more likely to make an in-app purchase, they used this event as an optimization goal. So by optimizing to an event, they converted new users into paying customers at a 10 times higher rate than before, with a 66% lower cost per conversion compared to campaigns not optimized for in-app actions. Um, imagine this applied everywhere through one campaign. Um, and that's what we're doing with the next generation um, of universal app campaigns. We'll join your conversion data through Firebase Analytics um, and our signals about users to help you find high quality installs for your app. It's unique in the industry, it's super powerful, um, and you know, as we saw earlier, it's very simple to use. Um, our goal is for you to spend more time understanding your users and improving your app and not mastering our tools. Um, to make this work, we've made it easy to share your conversion events with AdWords. Universal App Campaigns will work seamlessly with Firebase Analytics and continue to integrate with the top third-party app SDKs. You can funnel these events and conversions you're tracking into, in Firebase into AdWords, um, and Universal App Campaigns will automatically optimize towards these events. Um, so if your client is looking for users most likely to take meaningful actions like reach, like register their details or purchase that new camera or book a vacation, we've made this easier than ever. Um, you know, with the help of analytics and measurement tools like Firebase, you as marketers can begin to understand the actions that drive lifetime value for your app. Um, through identifying valuable in-app actions, we can leverage Google's app promotion inventory um, on Android and you know, now on iOS to deliver quality users. Um, in the case above, you know, find users who will not only install the app, yet also subscribe to HBO Now. So just to summarize, um, we're really proud of the progress we've made in the app discovery so far with launches like Search Ads in Play um, and version one of Universal App Campaigns that you know, maximize the number of downloads, but we're all more excited about this future of Universal App Campaigns where you identify and share the insights that matter to your business, um, and Google helps you find more of the right users based on these particular insights. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to open it up to some questions. Awesome. So we'll come through. Faster than I expected. We've got a lot of time for questions. Okay. Thanks, guys.